want you, because you're in covenant, to sit at my table, and I want to make your wildest dreams come true. I want to cause old men to dream dreams and young men to see visions. And those visions, I want them to be prepared so that whenever you enter into covenant at the right time, I want you to sit down and enjoy it with me, your Savior, your King, your God. Because you're in covenant, come sit at my table. And then it said that he gave her parched corn. And she, in other words, there's some things you're not even trying to harvest. But because you're in covenant, Whenever you sit at my table, there's some things you don't even know that you want. There's some desires that you haven't even had yet. And I want to prepare all those too. I want to give you and bless you with things that you didn't even expect. I want to give you things you didn't even ask for. I want to do things for you, Randy, because you're in covenant. God said, I want to open up your eyes and that home you want to have for the prisoners that's getting out that once were bound but are now set free. I want to do more than that. And I want to provide a means where I can give you more than you're even asking for. Why? Because you're in covenant. It said she ate and she was full and she left. And as she left in verse 15, it says, And when she was risen up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men, saying, Let her glean even among the sheaves and reproach her not. Will you two help me and come up here just for a second? Faith, will you come up here? Will you line in a straight line and face this direction? Let's go ahead and stand right here and, and line up facing this direction so the camera can see it too. Let's get in a straight line. There we go. You can be in the back. Here's a, a covenant person. And they're in the back of the line. And it said that Ruth left in covenant. And then as she left, Boaz spoke up and said, you've been gleaning in the back of the fields. But because you're in covenant, I can't help but turn everything around. Just turn around for me. Go ahead and face that direction. In other words, he said you were in the back of the field, gleaning, getting the trash of the crops. And, and he said it like this in the Bible, that the last shall be first and the first shall be last. God turns things around for covenant people. And he said, Ruth, you can't go onto the back of the field because you no longer fit in there. Because you no longer can be at the back of the line. You've got to be at the front. So he said, come to the center of the field where the best crops are and the best resources and the best things are and glean there. In other words, I don't want you to stop working because I don't want you to go back to Moab and get lazy. You've still got to work. You're still going to have to press. You're still going to have to sow to grow. But I st you're still there's certain things you're still going to have to do but let me make it easier on you by moving you to the front of the line. In other words, instead of waiting to the end of the day to harvest your crops, you can be the one to harvest it first and then help somebody else because I know you're in covenant and I know once you do your part, you understand covenant and you'll help somebody else do their part. And God is looking for some people to promote and turn things around in your life if you're in covenant. You can sit down. Thank you so much. As I come to a close on this note, and that there is two more chapters we could talk about verse by verse. It's so powerful. Maybe at another time we can do that. But verse 16 says, as he promoted her to the front of the line, he said, and let fall also some of the handfuls of purpose for her and leave them that she may glean them and rebuke her not. And I almost thought this was mistranslation until God slapped me upside the head and said, I wrote it like that. Because it said, let also fall some handfuls of what? Of purpose. In other words, if you're in covenant, God is going to allow you to accomplish the things you want to. But then he said, because you're, you've accomplished what you want to, then I need your help. Because you were in covenant, I blessed you to do what you wanted to do. Now let me drop some purpose on your life for what I need you to do because we're in covenant. And covenant is not just saying, God, give me, give me, give me, this is Jimmy. But covenant is saying, God, you've blessed me so much. What can I do with my life for you today? Who can I help? Who can you bring across my path that I can minister for you? And it said that God just began to drop handfuls of purpose. And as she was gleaning, she's just picking up purpose 
and saying, you know what? I need to just agree with Brother Randy. And next time we have that offering, I just need to go sow something for him. And then she was just gleaning and picked up another purpose and said, you know what? I realize we need some children's workers in this house. And maybe I can just get involved and do that too. And she's just gleaning and she's just picking up all kinds of purpose. Maybe I just need to start some type of ministry. Maybe I just need to do something in my church. Maybe I need to do more than what I'm doing because I've just been so blessed. God will begin to drop purpose on covenant people because he realizes, guess what? Because you've done it for me, I'm going to do it for you. And that goes the same way. If I do it for you, you've got to do it for me. That's covenant. I think that's a good place to stop tonight. Maybe we can talk some more about it. But don't ever take for granted the power of a covenant heart. Realize that God does everything according to his law and his word. And his law is covenant. Covenant is powerful. Minister Page, she talked about the covenant between David and Jonathan. And most ministers, I never really heard a minister minister, I did one time, but it said that the soul of Jonathan claved to the soul of David. And it said that David loved him as the love of a woman. In other words, it wasn't some kind of messed up thing. And I've even heard some ministers use that to believe in homosexuality. Don't get that twisted. That's not right. It was saying that David loved Jonathan as the same love as a woman. And the only way I know how to compare it is the love I have for my wife. Because we are so dramatically different than one another. She's organized. I like to call it abstract is what I am. She likes to get up early. I like to stay up late. And we're so different, it almost don't make sense for us even being together. I'm passive and she's the fireball. It almost doesn't make sense. But there's such a love that I have for her, and I hope she has it for me. I'm just waiting for you to say it. And I realize that in the midst of our covenant, we're strong. Because she can get up early, and I can stay up late, and we cover the whole time. That I can be passive and pet you and tell you I love you, and she can bring the correction and say, you know what, you just need to get it right. And it describes Jonathan and David of being so different. David grew up in the sheep dung out in the shepherd's field. Jonathan grew up in the palace with a silver spoon. And it said that David loved Jonathan as that of a woman. In other words, they were a missing link for one another. They realized that their covenant together made them stronger. David was ushered into the palace didn't know how to act, didn't know how to dress, didn't know who to address. He didn't know protocol. He didn't know who to call. But because he was in covenant with Jonathan, Jonathan said, you bow here, you eat with this fork, you put on this robe, you talk to this person, you walk or you do this thing. And because they were in covenant, it empowered one another. I'm not trying to re-preach your message. And what God is trying to get us to understand is our significance is in our difference not in our likeness. And God's been speaking into my heart, telling me that the group of people that's going to come here is not going to look anything like us. They're not going to dress like us. They might come in here with shorts and braids and T-shirts, with piercings and tattoos, but we got a covenant. And Ruth had a mindset of covenant, and that's why I'm speaking this out to hopefully uh, that you can latch on to this too and God can begin to open up your mind. That God is going to begin to do things and bring people our way and the way we've done things might not work forever. But he said, I'm bringing a group of people that's going to be so different than you. But I'm going to give you such a love because of covenant that you're going to work together so flawlessly and so seamlessly that we're going to accomplish more in our last days than we ever did in our first I love each and every one of you so much. Will you stand on your feet with me? I value your time so much, and I try to have something I can bring to you anytime we come together because I don't want you to, to come and not get anything or receive anything. And please don't get that twisted because my prayer is that God can remove me and you can see God through me in some form, some fashion, some way, if it's through my words or, or anything. Because I desire most of all to help each and every one of you. Each and every one of you means so very much to me. God, he, I've been one of the, the, the type of people, God never allows me to minister something until I've had to live it for a little while. And sometimes that makes that difficult on me. 
I'm not one of the preachers that can just get it off a tape. Or, or just because it reads good in the book, I, I can't get up and say it. I just get so convicted. And, 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 and I've tried it in the past, and God will send people my path, my, across my path and make me do things and, and, do, and live things. It's just been amazing. That's just how God works with me. So understand that I'm